cyber hygiene basics. That's what it all comes back to, man. Really, seriously. I, I left the military in 97 and literally the first role I had in the private sector, this is the things we're talking about. Basics. What have you got? What do you need to have? And if you don't need to have it, why are you running it? Because 10 times out of 10, it's going to get exploited by somebody. <laughs> so run all of those services that are necessary. Yeah, I get that. I get this is your DNS server, but do you need that web server running? Yes or no? That's where web shells come from. Okay. And does it need to be an RDP server? You know, if you do need access to an RDP server, why not pro provide protections around it? Or at least, for example, just at least monitor the logs. Because the one really good thing about the logs in, in, in Microsoft is that they tell you when somebody's brute forcing these applications. You know it. You see it. It's right there. Secure those services that you do provide. Configure them. Patch them. Understand that that's what you need to do. And you know how to reduce your workload? Is don't run services you don't need to be running. Don't run stuff that, need, that you need to be patching if you don't need to have it as part of a business application or a critical business process. This applies to the client applications as well. Adobe, um, you know, Microsoft Office, applies to all the endpoints, as well as maintain that administration and RMM discipline. That's, that's something that um, you know, we see, uh, and I say we, I'm talking about not just hunters, but I'm talking about the entire industry. Is we, we, we see this, these, these kinds of things. We, uh, Dre mentioned it before. If somebody wants to have shadow IT out there that's available to be able to log in. Um, I did a, an, a, an assessment, I believe, in 1998 of the National White Collar uh, Crime Organization. That's you know run by N NW3C, I think is the the name, and uh, two administrators had dual home systems, and what that means is they they actually had two network interface cards in them, one that was inside the firewall and the other one is outside the firewall, and they did it to make their job easier. But it was that lack of admin discipline that exposed the organization to potential compromise. Uh, and, and I did, once I found in that s assessment that they, they did have the systems dual homed, and, and again, this is you know 24 years ago, um, I begged my boss to let me break into it. <laughs> she said, no, this isn't a pen test. This is an assessment. It's like, oh, come on, dude. It's right there. Let me touch it, please. You know, he's like, no, no, no. You can't do that. Addressing initial access blog. This is the blog we were talking about earlier. This is the blog that's got all that secret sauce in it that Dre put together that worked up in his little kitchen. You know, it's got all that great stuff. It talks about the configuration changes. They're simple registry changes. You just run the code and it does it for you. And Dre actually, believe it or not, and again, this is all Dre. Dre did all the testing. So instead of putting it in HKEY current user, he put it in HKEY local machine and tested it and found out, guess what? If I put it in HKEY user, it only works for that user. If I put it in HKEY local machine, guess what? It works across the entire system regardless of the user logged in. 